This is just what's been waiting for you. Jim McNally, Cowland Panthers, right here. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> I've sat up there through every swinging day. And I know some of you guys have. So, you just tell me when you want to leave, and I'll be glad to do it, okay? So, or I'll give you what you want. Or, I'll give you what I got. Alright, I got a lot of video. I don't have a lot. I got some tape. I'll just go over some things that come up this year, and I'm going to sit right here. And I just keep jumping around here. So if it applies, who do you find? Uh, I will say this, there's a couple guys here, Howard Mudd, who was here earlier, I don't know where he is. Basically, when I started all this drop step stuff, I used to do a little of it before I met him, but when I met him, I, he's the guy that really taught me how to do it. On my pass pro, uh, I'm going to give a very good compliment to Larry Bechtel. On my pass pro, I used to just move one foot at a time, and after I talked to him, I moved two feet at a time. Okay, it's not a long story, but I, I owe both those guys a lot. Uh, okay, now, a couple things that happened to us this year, all right? And I'm not going to give you a whole dissertation on the play. I'm going to give you a situation that would come up, and then what would happen, and then where we saw we get to take advantage of the play, right? We ran a lot of, and I mean a lot of, the weak side power play, okay? And what we would do is, and don't ask me a lot of fucking questions about it, because I got to go to the next point, you with me? All right, God damn it, now here we go. All right, now, what we would do is, we would kick out this guy right here. We'd put the guy in motion, whatever. We'd double team this three technique right here to the backside backer like that, block the center on this nose guard that's really on the other shoulder, and pull this guard right up in this hole and block that backer in one little count. You know, my point is, it's just a weak side power play. Does anybody don't know what I'm talking about? Right, you understand what I mean? We would run off tackle weak, double teaming to the mic, pulling the old guard up in the hole. We needed a tackle bubble though. It would be a check with me. If we didn't have this tackle bubble thing, we couldn't run it. Is there anybody that's lost here? A lot of times that end comes up the field, we got a big hole. Well, what had happened is we ran this play a lot, and that three technique started jumping way the hell out of here, rolling in the hole. So the point I'm making is that uh, as the season progressed, this three technique would jump way out and try to split the double team, okay? And uh, what we found out is that as well as running the weak side power play, which we're going to continue to run, let's run a play where we kick him out, give him the same illusion we're double teaming that guy, but double team to him. Are you with me? And just zone block these two guys and run off tackle. That son of a bitch will go way out here and there's a big hole. So the combination of the weak power with the weak off tackle play, doubling the three, the double team on this guy should give them the illusion that we're doubling the three, and as he rolls out or goes to fight the double team, there'll be a big hole for just an off tackle zone play with the back kicking out the end. Have I lost anybody? Is that tailback rolling? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he just runs the normal 24 bob. He just runs the normal 22 play. We don't necessarily try to. Yeah, he would just run as he would. We would call this play, for example, 24 bend. The back blocks the end. We'd call this play like 34 jab. The point I'm making is when we were doubling this three, the way they tried to stop it was to roll the three technique, set him down in the hole, you know, whatever this thing is, boom, because it made it hard to double team him, and we're trying to boom, whatever. So now we'll just double team to that guy. Okay, they'll roll out, and there'll be a big hole in here just to run a straight handoff. Okay, but you've got to run the double team play to the three technique pulling the off guard. You've got to run the weak side power play or the double tip. Steps the same on the double? You know, the, the, the steps would basically be the same on the double, only we'd be doubling for that guy rather than that guy. I guess it's who our eyes go. All right, next point, all right? All right, now. I, I, I do, we, we try to see, Jesus, we're going to double team this so much, and he's looping way the hell out here. We're pulling the guard to try to get in that. Well, anyway, the ball would go. I missed it. 
power will play the ball when that inside anyway. But that's not the point of that little discussion. There. Let's go with number two here. We, we would see one of our best places of just a power. So we would see these big ass tilted nose guards. We see these five techniques, these loose fives, Mike, tackle, drill, and whatever that stuff is. So one of our best plays that we run is we come over here, put a guy in motion, kick out this Sam, double team this end to the to him, block down, block down, do this, pull this guy up in the hole and run off. Power play, a power off cap. Can okay, anybody understand that play? All right, so what was happening is this loose five technique would be kind of jumping out here. This nose is coming over here. Hard to double team that loose five technique, that loose hand. The tackle and the tight end are trying to double him. He's looping out. This guy's coming like that. The tackle's not coming off in time, etc. So what we did a little of and what we're going to do a little more next year, I believe, against these loose five techniques with this tilted nose on our power play. We got this big ass tilt here. We got that loose five technique. Is just take the tackle and block them down now. That's what we call it, a now call. And he's going to block that nose tackle to the back linebacker. With that, this guard can put his head underneath that guy, right down the middle of him. And this guy, a lot of times, will roll out of that block. When this guy is a loose five, if the tight end puts his head underneath him, he thinks it's like a down block on a sweep, and he rolls back outside of that. We still pull the guard up here tight and we run the power play over here. My point is, when we bring this guy down, it secures the block on the nose tackle, all right? Because when you don't double that end, when you block, when you just block down, you put a lot of pressure on that right guard's block on that one-on-one -on -one tilted nose. Well, when you come down and double that nose guard like he is a, a defensive lineman, there is a bigger crease because you know this guy might close it, so you're taking advantage of getting movement on the nose tackle, which gives you a bigger crease to run the ball right up the middle. If I lost anybody. Now, if this defensive end, no different than we've ever done it, this, when this tight end comes down to block him, if he fights the inside, the guard blows him up. The guard blocks the end with the tight end, and we just let the scraping linebacker go. The point I'm making is, tilted nose guard, loose five techniques, hard to double team. Take the tackle right down now, double team the nose guard, gives you a good seal on the nose. That means his guard can put his head underneath the tilted nose, and he'll have a tendency to roll out of that then, and the ball might go right up the middle. Questions? So I took the double team off the five technique, blocked him down on the nose guard, Okay, give the five technique the illusion that you're that you're kind of pinning them, and he a lot of the time these guys are so loose when you put your hat underneath them, he rolls off the block. All right, any quiet? I don't want to go through the whole power play. I'm just giving you little tidbits that happened to us this year when we tried to run our power play versus this loose three tech. What? Jim, I want the uh, <laughs> backside backer. Backside backer. The tackle. That's the guy he's doubling back for. Okay. What happened was. What, what happens was, when this guy goes down right now, if this guy doesn't loop, well, excuse me, if this guy gives you something to hit, you hit it, and a lot of times you can secure that thing right there, and if this guy scrapes, and even if the tight end can't block him, this guy blows it up right there. He's on a tight trap. He is so tight, he's tighter than Dick's half band. And that ball goes right up the gut, and you just let the scraping backer go, because the backs get out the sand. Questions? So instead of double teaming the, the five technique, send the tackle right down. The guard's on a tight trap course. And as I said before, this tight end puts his hat underneath him and tries to turn him back that way. The ball goes right up the middle. Balls are smoking. I ain't joking. All right. That's point number two. We got point number one. We have the weak power. We go to the other bullshit there we talked about. All right. Uh, let's talk about this other stuff, okay? Uh, Bob talked about this earlier today. We call this a fallback technique. All right, we'll come out here, we'll run a zone play with the strong side. We really don't run the strong side zone play much anymore. Our best play is a play we call 24 and 25 Bob. We run the weak side off tackle play, put the lead back on the will. That's our best play. There are a lot of problems running to the strong side, so we don't even run our zone play over there. Or we just run it to the weak side. We have other plays to the tight end. Okay, now here's what we see, right? 
We will see a situation where these linebackers are real deep. They'll take that nose tackle and they'll do that to him. And this backer right here, the ball would go off tackle, and this Mike is deep. He reads the, the, the nose tackle, uh, goes like that. He makes the ball cut back. This guy falls over the top. Uh, what Bob said earlier, they won the Philly technique, which we used to do when we played Philadelphia. He'd take a deep bucket step, he'd come back and hit that nose tackle, and then they would exchange this thing. You know, these two would block those two, and then the ball would ever. Here's what we do now. If we see a fallback technique right now, okay, we treat it just like the Mike's backside, all right? We just take this guy and take one step straight up field with our inside foot. He blocks him along, and when that guy blocks down, he fills. He fills every si single time. He thinks it's a double team, one step over. They don't fall back. Now the whole key is to keep the zone, keep the stretch, make the backers move. But that sounds good. These some of these backers here, they go like here he fall. All you got to do is take one step. Even if you don't hit him, you'll fill boom. And what that does, you can you, you stop the nose just to count, not enough to screw up the center. Any questions on that? <coughs> You got a loose five, you got a five technique, you got a tilted nose. Now, you do have a problem if the end pinched in and the nose tackle goes that way and the mic can scrape either way. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, the, 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 the right tackle's either got to work, the right guard's either got to work, work with the tackle or got to work with the center. Guard step with his inside foot. Guard will step with his inside foot, all right? So my point is, here's that nose tackle, all right? Yeah, the, 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 our back is right here. The whole theory is you take your drop step, you take a deep drop step, you get a piece of this guy with your shoulder, and then you, you stay on the angle. You make this guy move, all right? That all sounded good until that linebacker, fuck, that's so much boom, and he, you know, so rather than do what we call the Philly technique, because we wanted a bigger hole rather than cut back here, all we did is just take one step here, I think we'll just put a hand on the guy, boom, boom, all right, and he filled. That's the same thing we'd have to do with a guy like Jesse Tuggle, okay, who, if you knew you had a three technique and a one technique right here, you have Mike in the middle, okay, and we run this own play, and he breaks the ball, cut back, and he hangs and takes the back door. All you have to take one step, one step, boom, he'll fill. I don't know why he does, he's taught, the center does this, you fill that in, yeah, center goes here, you hang behind for the cutback. The Bears did that. Okay, that, that, what we try to do is take advantage of the fallback technique. Backfield coach doesn't like it, he says you fuck up the read on the down guy. You know, they like the down guy to just come like a bitch so they can read him, you know what I mean? But that was something we did. All right, now we played Pittsburgh, who's a terrific defensive team. And we ran our off tackle play, it doesn't matter whether it's strong or weak, and this is no big deal. Shit, I saw this 15 years ago when I went to visit uh, Tom Freeman, Jim Coletto at Arizona State. But I didn't know when to use it, right? We're playing Pittsburgh. These some bitches are slanting. You can't cut Pittsburgh's ends off. You think you can, but you can't. Uh, now, they may have an inferior end or two playing at times, and you can cut them off. But when they're good ends in the game, and they're flexing off the ball, that some bitch slants down to them, your tackle can't cut them off. He fucking can't. You better run them behind him. So what we did is when we would run our zone play against Pittsburgh, their nose tackle always slanted. If he was, he never two gapped. I mean, he never two gapped the. Sh he was either looping, slanting, whatever, right? So what we did with our backside guard on our zone play against Pittsburgh, all right? We had our backside tackle do just what Howard teaches: a deep bucket step and, and get the hat across the tee. And we had the center do our normal zone. But we took the backside guard and we did a lateral lead on. That's the term I call between the center and off guard. So what we did was, we're playing Pittsburgh. They're in a nose guard. When they're in a 3-4 defense, those fuckers are slanting. Away. That's when they stole two gap. So our backside guard, that's all he did. Boom, boom. But what happened, when that end came in to slant, I wasn't in a hurry to get up on the backer, so it would be just boom, 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 bang. I'm right there. My body's there. Shut off the end. There's a little bit of a hole. If the nose slanted, boom, 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 I'm right there to block. Backers are deep. You weren't that concerned about them stoning you because it wasn't like uh, a real hard, just two-gapping defense. I wouldn't do it on the front side because my guard would be a little softer. I don't like it on the front side. I like it on the back side, shutting off the pinching end. 
Somebody have their hand up? Okay. And that was just our game plan last week. Uh, we normally, we would, would take the dot step with the one hand out, stay on the track. But you can't cut those ends off, right? A lot of times, I'll tell you what, the, the problem we're having a little bit with the zone block is the zone play. When we cut, when the ball has to cut back, because everything makes it cut back, there's one more swinging dick back here we can't block, or our tight end can't block them, or can't block them as effectively as we used to be able to. And that's where you got to deepen your back. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about, I think what the game's got to now with the offensive linemen is uh, the, the big thing that I'm sold on that makes our guys, if we do if we ever block anybody halfway decent, it's because we got a base. And I've done this for years, and I totally, this is the best thing we do, right? The best thing we do, we call it the demeanor, right? We're in this duck thing, and we go forward, and we go backward, we move our hands, but we're always into that whatever, right? So when our guys take steps, yeah, on, on most of the tight stuff, they are Frankensteining into the block. They hit a guy on a double team, their feet are mired in the ground. Everything is a base, 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 because we do so much of it. Back, 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 why don't you come up here? You know how to do this. Then we call this the duck demeanor, just the wave drill. All right, watch, well, he can do it right now, right? All right, so you move your feet, okay, in your hands. All right, okay, let's do this. Right, back, right now, pump your forward with the wide base. He's going to bend down a little lower, but he's old. Over here, that's right. over here, forward, back. Now, then I say, okay, partner demeanor. All right, now I'm a player. We got them all lined up at once, right? The whole fucking old line is up. I'm Garrido, right? So I'm doing this to Brockermeyer, right? Go ahead, hands up with your feet here, here, here. Now I attack him. Boom! He gets one run. Okay, here we go. Next one. Ready, said, huh? He gets one pass. Go ahead, pass block. Whatever you want to do. Blah, blah, blah. So what I mean, they get a rep at a run block, they get a rep at a pass block. After I have gone. You know, and they're tired, right? So we're not trying to do the old duck walk. All we're trying to do is make them move, flat-footed, whatever that is, right there. Here's what it looks like. Knees in, toes are up. Power angles. Forward and backward, for it was this. Body control, move your up. Sideways is pass pro, moving the hands. <clears throat> so hopefully when a guy has to hit somebody, they're like that. Whatever. Coach, how wide do you think their feet? How wide? Yeah. They're wider than most of the guys we're demonstrating today. They're they're not this wide, they're I don't know. I'm I'm a little guy. How wide are they? Pretty fucking wide, right? Hey <laughs> right there. Wow. I, I wouldn't use it if I'm running out there to get a, a safety on a sweep or something. Any close quarter blocking, we'd be that wide. You try to your knees in then? Power, yes. All right, if your knees are out, like power angles, knees in, toes out on your insteps. That's your power. Same in your stances. Your better stances look like this. You, well, I don't know what that is. See that? That's power. That's fucked up. <laughs> it is. Right? I mean. So that little thing I was just doing was just that little duck thing. You arch your back and it's a pass or one. It's just that feeling of when you hit somebody, your feet are spread. Everything you do is a duck down, uh, uh, in steps. <clears throat> but you try not to be on the balls of our feet. Sometimes they are. I've been talking about this shit forever. You fuckers heard this forever. All right, now, when we looked at all our film, the big mistake on the run and the pass was what everybody was talking about today, the second step. Fuck it, I'll show you the film. The second step, if I gotta block this guy right here, whatever the thing is, and I move this foot, and this thing does this, I'm dead. I'm dead, right? Let's say I'm, uh, watch this, on the back side, I gotta cut off that four technique, right? I don't know if he's gonna slant or not. 
It may be there. So I take a good pull, right? When this thing goes there, I'm fucked. Because if the guy don't slant, I go like this, he hits me right here, okay, and boom, he flattens me out. So even on the back side, on the inside zone play, where the ball might cut back, we will take a good deep drop step, second step down right now. Boom. We'll try to catch him on the third step. We may never cut him off, but I know this, we've had enough of here and that which is too big a second step, and when they hit us, if they're not slanting, we get flattened out. So all blocks, close quarter, power, zone, our second step, and it's to the extent now where it's, and uh, get it down now. To the point now, we actually call it something, pop it. I think I got that from coach at Georgia Tech. You're the guy you work with, Marty. I really emphasize that way back. Shunkweller. Drop, and what we do is, we got a guy on the angle. Here, here's what we do, we got a guy on the angle, and I want to block him on the angle. Like Howard would say, the fucker's on the angle, keep him on the angle. We call it, drop it, drop it, and pop it. Drop it, pop it, drop it, pop it. And if the guy's head up, Okay, I don't want to go as far. All I call it is jab it, jab it, pop it. That's beside the point. The second step doing this on the majority of our blocks is where we broke down on most of the things. Like if you're double teaming this guy right here, say he's right here, right? Now I'm double teaming to a back line. What we do is we kind of pick this foot up and just put it down a little bit, whatever that is, right? When this foot right here would do that, or it would do, so if we don't take that second step, the double team guy and get it down, it's a bad block. Second step of the block is down 